Okay, we know that is recorded. Uh, so uh, welcome everyone. It's a pleasure to to have this session again. We, um, Daniela and myself, we're very excited to have this uh, this session about the stacks and queues and, and show uh, a couple of uh, problems that we have been working that we know that you have been also working on. And so yeah, well, let's start. As always, we want to introduce Ella. So she is always our uh, our partner here in the in the sessions. Uh, it's a it's a little like a pet for us for because it's always encouraging us to explain ourselves better, and and we always um, like introduce this rubber dog because we want to keep this a little relaxed. And of course, that everyone knows that. We are going to explain the simple, uh, the simplest way as possible, because we want that everyone understands uh, all the, the problems and the solutions and all that. So we keep in mind that um, this rubber duck. One Hi, uh, Gabriela. I yeah. think, uh, uh, why don't we ask all the participants, can you all see the slides? If you can just enter a B in the chat. If not into P, <laughs> we just want to get some feedback. All right, everyone can 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 see the slide deck. Okay, awesome, very good. Okay, we can continue. Thank you. Great. So this is um, well, we are presenting. Like I said, uh, this is myself. You can connect uh, what you want in LinkedIn. And uh, here's my email. If someone wants to also reach out for questions or something about algorithms, just uh, here's our, our um, ways to connect on email or also LinkedIn. So here's Daniela also too. Okay, so those these are some tips for, for you. If you perhaps we are going to share this slide and you can take a look at these tips. I'm not going to be um, reading them, each, uh, each of them. But the most important thing is that, you know, when you are having an interview or a tech interview, just try to, um, to relax yourself and clean um, your concepts before, before having this interview. Preparing is the best, is the best part that we can do before having an interview. So, the pre the most the better preparation that we do is the best result that we will have of course so that's when all the hard work that we have done pays off and so it is your call during the present during the interview and when you are doing the solution and and yeah a clean code also is always important um, so regarding the problems that we're going to solve, these are the two problems that we picked for this session. The first one is uh, the lead code 84. It's the largest rectangle in histogram. And in this uh, problem uh, will be the interviewer and Daniela will be the interviewee who will be uh, doing the solution of this problem. So I'm going to, um, let me uh, go for the next slide. Uh, and we will use a virtual whiteboard because we're going to show what is the thought process and what are the steps that we're going to follow for, uh, for going to the solutions and what are the optimization that we can do and, and all of that in uh, like a virtual whiteboard would be a Google Doc. Okay, so uh, the first problem, I'm going to read this problem. Um, so is um, the title of the problem is like I said, largest rectangle in a histogram. And it says, given an array of integers, which uh, the name hates, representing the histograms bar hate, where the width of each bar is one, return the area of the largest rectangle in the histogram. Some of the constraints for this problem are like the length of the array heights can be up to 105, between one and 105 inclusive, inclusively. And uh, the um, heights, uh, every element in, in the heights array can be between zero and 104. 
And we have this example where we have an histogram with this input. We have the height of two, one, five, six, two, and three. And we, after the solving the solution, solving the problem, we get an output of 10. And the explanation is because of the above is a histogram where the width of each bar is one. The largest rectangle is shown in the red area, which has an area of 10 units. Let's take a look at the second example. And we have um, a histogram of, with two bars. We have two values in the array heights. One is two and four. And the largest area of uh, a rectangle with these uh, bars is four in this case. And so please, um, Daniela, could you try this uh, problem and let us know how do, how do you could implement a solution for this problem? Absolutely. Uh, Gabriela, I'm going to uh, share the uh, document on my end. Yeah. So let me do that. Okay, can you see my screen? My yeah, we can. Okay, so, so the problem is we need to find the largest rectangle in a histogram. And you mentioned that uh, we have bars in these histograms. They can be of varying heights. And uh, each of these bars has a width, has a width of one, one unit, right? And we want to find out the largest rectangle uh, in this histogram. Okay. Yeah. The largest rectangle in the histogram. So as I'm looking through this, um, so I could interpret it as um, find the largest rectangle. Uh, at a certain height in the histogram. All right. So I'm looking at this first histogram where we have bars of height two, one, five, six, two, and three. And um, See, if I were to just think, look, look at this and think, think of a brute force algorithm, uh, we have we have about we have six elements in this array, six bars. What I could do is I could uh, iterate over this heights array, and I just put the brute force approach. Just also make a note of this. And as I'm iterating over this height array for each I, I could actually look to my left and look to my right and basically find out what, which are the bars that are kind of, of uh, defining the ends of my rectangle. For example, the first, the first bar at height two, I have, uh, I have this bar of one that defines kind of the end it's of nine o'clock. Okay, just please excuse that. <laughs> my computer is just reminding me it's nine. Uh, so I have the bar of height uh, two and to do its right, the adjacent bar is, uh, is of height one. And so this, I could, uh, so, so that this pretty much marks the end of this particular rectangle. So likewise, when I come to in, to, uh, to the next bar, which is index one, I could look to my to my far right and again look to my left. And as soon as I come across the first bar that is kind of lower in height than me, then I know that there, uh, I have reached the, the upper bound of my rectangle. So here, so in the case of, of the, the bar of height one, when I look to the right, all these bars are taller than me. So my rectangle is getting supported. And so it, it, it pretty much extends to the end of my array. And likewise, when I look to the left, my bar is getting supported. So 
again, I'm, I'm supported all the way along the length of this entire way. Now, this would basically involve two loops because the first one is I'm going to iterate over each of these heights. And then at each of these bars, at each of these indexes, when I'm in this, in, when, when I'm processing them in this particular array, I'm again iterating to the right, to the left. So that's, that's again a total of n times. So the time complexity of this brute force approach would actually be O n squared. But it is, it's a very straightforward, it's easy to understand and you know, probably just easy, just simply, you know, easy to code as well. And it's just the first thought that comes to my mind. The space complexity, we're not allocating any additional space, it would be O1. So that's my, the first, just the, the first uh, thought that comes to my mind or is, uh, is this one. Can you think of a solution where you could improve the time complexity instead of having the a square of mm -hmm. n, mm -hmm. like having a linear time? A linear time. A linear time where we can perhaps do one iteration over the array mm -hmm. heights mm -hmm. and, and find out how we can how we can get the greatest area or the largest grid that we can mm -hmm. get from the from this input okay so you want me to explore improving the time complexity getting into linear time probably something like on exactly okay. all right so yeah I would, yeah I'm i i think it would be good to yeah to explore that kind of solution and I think that could be possible. All right. So I'm, I'm going to use Google Drawings to just uh, to walk through some to, to my thought process. If that's okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Please right. do. Okay. So first, I'd like to uh, just expand on the uh, the test cases that we have. So. For heights, um, I could have a single bar, right, of just perhaps just of height two. Then I could also have uh, the bars such that they could be in different orders. So I could have bars that are in increasing order, like this. And then I could also have, let's see, the different. Uh, values we could have for the, for the bar heights. I could also have bars, say you have one, two, and then I could also uh, probably have maybe two bars that are of the same height. So this is another possibility. And the last one I'm going to add is, uh, let's say I have some bars that are now decreasing decreasing in height. So I'm just going to use a couple of these test cases. And um, I'd like to first start off with with uh, this particular one. So we'll just we'll focus on this one, let's see, first. And I'm going to use a color. All right, that's the one. So just, I'd like to put a visual here. Okay, so let's say we have these bars. And I'm going to just stack them to five. Okay. Now, if we want to improve on the time complexity, and let's say we want to reduce the number of times we are iterating over this particular heights array, we need to explore a more efficient way in which we can, we can iterate over this array. Perhaps uh, 
we make use of additional space to achieve our goal of improving the time complexity. So I'm just going to complete my visual, this, this diagram here. So here we just have bars that are increasing in height. Okay, so you have one, two, three, then we have four, and then we have five. Okay, all right. So And I'm going to put a text box here. And let's see if I can just give these ones some numbers. So one, two, three, and four. All right. And then here, just going to ex Let's see if I can expand this. Incorporate with me. Let me just add another text box here. All right, so here we go. So let's say I'm, oh, we start iterating over this heights array and we are processing each bar at index i. So when I, when I come across the first one, let's say I've, I've come to the bar uh, zero, I am not uh, sure as to how, uh, how much this bar extends to the right. I do know that this is this is the first bar, so I do know where I'm where this where this rectangle of height one is beginning, but I don't know how far to the right it's going to extend because it's just that I have not uh, I have not encountered the additional bars in this particular heights array. However, once I get to this next one, which is uh, which is bar at index one. I can, look, I can look back at my immediate neighbor and I can see that, well, I am supporting this, this previous bar, okay? I'm not blocking this bar because this bar, uh, this rectangle of height one can still continue. It still extends because my height is greater than this. And likewise, the same pattern continues. So, if we were to express this as, let's say we, we want to keep track of which are the, the, active, the active rectangles or the, or the bars whose rectangles are uh, the, the, the end of that rectangle we have not yet determined because that bar has not been blocked. For example, if I had a bar, if, if bar uh, one, was say of height of one, then I would pretty much know that this, this rectangle has come to an end. So here, if I were to keep track of the active, active bars, so initially I would not have anything in my, in my active bars, but then when I, when I iterate over the first one, I can say zero, I can add zero. And then when I come to the, to the next bar, I can look at my immediate, um, immediate neighbor, the immediate act bar that, that I have, which is zero. And I can see that I am actually supporting that rectangle. I'm not blocking it. So I, I just add one to it. And likewise, I'm going to do the same here because two is supporting one, the, the bar two supports the rectangle at height of, um, at height uh, given specified by index one, which is, it's, it's, it's at a height of two. So all of these actually support each other, okay? So what happens is that I have this, I have this nice uh, list of all these active bars. Likewise, let's say I had something here, okay, over here. And now here, right here at index five, when I end, so I'm, I'm going to actually modify, I've actually modified this particular heights array. And now I've got one, okay? So I've added one more bar of height one. So let's see what happens when I come to index five. So when I, when I, when I come to this bar five, I'm going to look at my immediate neighbor, okay? And by immediate neighbor, I don't mean literally this neighbor. I'm looking at the most uh, at at the most recently 
added bar to my to my list. So that is the bar at index four. Well, I see that the height of this bar is greater than the 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 height of the current bar that is getting processed. So that that signals that we have reached the end of the rectangle supported by this particular bar. So this is the time when I can confidently say I can calculate the area of this particular uh, uh, rectangle of height specified by this particular index. So this would be of, of height uh, five. And so what would happen is we could actually, so you actually end up with zero, one, two, three. Okay. And I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm able to calculate the height of, of this one. So we can actually dismiss this. Next, I will again go and go and look at this particular bar and say that, oh, this one's this rectangle, okay, this two is of height greater than what my current bar is. So again, the same thing. We can we we now know where this rectangle ends. And so we can we can again calculate the area of this rectangle. And so through a series of these steps, uh, we can actually find out the upper bounds of the, of the rectangle, as well as because of the way we add the, the, the rectangles to our active, active bars, we can actually find out what, which, where my rectangle actually began. So for example, let's, let's take case in point this one. So when I was at, when I encountered uh, the bar at index five, I look at what's what which one was the last bar that I've added that was that was bar four so I know that okay this bar has ended at at index five okay now I want to calculate the width of this particular bar well to calculate the, it calculate the width of this particular bar I look at its immediate neighbor okay the one just just before it and that is three and so I can now say it's going to be five minus three, and because this uh, this bar, the the width of this rectangle does not include this particular bar, I need to make a little adjustment. I'm going to subtract one here, so of 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 a unit width, and so that's how I arrive at five minus four, which is one, which is the width of this particular bar. And I can I can walk through another example, also, uh, to explain how how this really goes. Uh, so last last one that I have is, we'll just make this a little more more simple. So what I'll do is I'm going to take these. Okay, and let's see I can just copy it here. Okay, and I'm just going to play play with these heights. So here, I'm going to take this one. I'm going to place it here. Okay. So now again, I'm going to uh, let me open up another. So again, we we are iterating through the heights array. We want to iterate, iterate through this just once, and we want to keep track of the bars that have not been blocked. In other words, there's a good chance that the rectangle at this particular bar height is going to continue to expand to the right. So let's say the first, we come across, we, we, are, we are at zero, index zero, okay? So that's, that's our first bar, okay? So this is, this is good. When I come to index one, well, this, uh, this bar is actually supporting the previous bar. So that, that bar gets added here. Well, when I come to index two, what I see is the 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 last one that I added, which is which is this one one, it's actually getting blocked here. So so in that case, what I do is I'm going to take out one, okay? Because at this point, this this is no longer active, okay? This bar at at height, we'll just give it a 
I'm going to give it an arbitrary height of, let's say, I, I'm, I'm just going to call it five. Okay, so let, let me add some heights here. Just so your heights, we're just going to say is four, five, and we can just give a height of two. Okay, and so here we have, um, we know that this, this, this bar is getting blocked. So we have taken it out of the list of my active bars. And we can we can calculate the area of this particular of the rectangle that is that is at the height say five. Now I can I also can can go back and take a look at the bar at at index. Now here we have zero, and we see that this bar too is higher, is taller than my than the current bar that I'm processing. That means this one too is getting blocked by this current bar so what what i can do is i can actually take this one off as well we'll calculate the area and then what i have really the active the only active bar that we have right now is at index two okay and then to to actually ease with the uh, the computation of these particular areas make it in the more consistent way, I'm actually going to add, I would actually add, this is just a dummy bar of height zero, because I want to, uh, I want to also signal the end of this, of this entire array. So here, I'm going to add zero here, a bar of, of height zero, because when I come to the index, so this is going to be an index. Let me get this here. Um, and for consistency, I'm going to just let me write down the indexes here. So here, this was at index zero. This was at one. This is two. And this one's at three. So now when you come to the index three, OK, well, the height is zero. I, 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 I go and look at my active bars. And I have the this the bar uh, at index two. And I see that, oh. The current bar is actually going to be blocking this bar. Well, now I know the uh, the end of of this particular of, of this particular rectangle. I can uh, calculate what is going to be the the actual width of this rectangle. So just, let's just walk through it and see what that would look like. So I only have one active bar, and what happens is when I when I take out this this particular uh, bar, this uh, I'm, I'm actually going to basically pop uh, this particular value from my uh, from my list here. So what happens is there is I have an empty list. So in this case, effectively, what we have is the width is actually just going to be equal to the current index. So the current index is three. So so for example, here in this case, uh, let's say this, this, last, this bar here was of a height two, the width of this particular rectangle is actually going to be three. So these are, these are the, um, the kind of the edge cases out here for you know, what, what happens when you actually reach the end of this particular uh, array and how can we calculate like the area of this rectangle uh, once we actually reach reach the edge at the end of the array. So yeah, I, I, I would like to make a comment in this part. In this case, can you can you say that once we do have the the width, which is equals to three, then which will be the area in this case? Okay, yes. So here, um, so so the, the the height in in question is the is is the heights um, corresponding to index two. So here we have actually we are we are we are actually looking at uh, finalizing. So we are basically finalizing the area of the rectangle. of height 
um, specify by index two. So that is, so when you look at zero, one, two, so that's, that's gonna be of a height. This value is actually two. So this area here would actually be equal to the height times the width three, and this will give you six. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah. yeah, I guess then the basically what what you want is to traverse over the, the height array mm -hmm. because what we want is to find what it's which is the largest area that we can cover. But uh, but since we have some some bars that are um, smaller than others, we need to know how a small bar is blocking the area of the previous ones because every every bar that is smaller it will be blocked will will block any other bar pre, um, before than than this one mm -hmm. uh, even if it's greater because um yeah because it, a smaller bar blocks the all the all the olders all the previous ones that are taller mm -hmm. right yes yes okay. and um and and the last thing to note is, for, uh, let's see, is this this case here. Okay. So the last thing to actually note is um, when you, let's say you have two bars of the of the same height. Okay. And um, we sh so long as this particular bar has not been blocked really both these bars are supporting the same rectangle. So that's just something to right. actually note. Uh, they're both supporting the same, the same rectangle. So um, we, it, so here, uh, let's say I've, I'm gonna extend this again. I'm gonna have another value here. And so for example, in this case, if I had four, five, two, two, and another two here, right? So, and let's say it so happened that I have come to index to, to index three, and I look at, so I have this one's, this one's, at, I, I have something at height two, okay? And I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now at, at index three. So when I look at what's what's the which is the active bar, I have this one at height two, but I see that oh, it's at the it's same height as me. So it really is not changing anything because we are both supporting the same rectangle. So I would not take I, I would actually just replace that with a single with with this bar at index three. So that's something to note because right. we want just us uh, the single. Um, index to represent a particular rectangle at a certain height. So that's yeah. what we have here. Okay. So so that's that's pretty much uh, yeah. the, the the idea that I had. And in terms of the data structures that would that is, that is going to make uh, that would lend itself to this is you know we talked that talked about the fact that we want to really get a linear time complexity. But we also want to take advantage of the fact that we can uh, keep track of the bars that we have traversed so far. But uh, you can see that what in order to um, in order to calculate the the start of uh, the uh, a bar, uh, the start of a rect rectangle at a certain bar height, we always go to the immediate uh, uh, the, the the bars we have most recently encountered. So it's almost like right. we are we are pushing and then we are we are popping the most recently uh, added bars to the to the to the active bars whatever the 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 array, and so the the stack data structure just lends itself beautifully to this particular problem, because it it enables us to go and quickly access the most recent active bars, and if the the current bar is such that it is blocking the most uh, the most recently added bars we can at once take action and because that that that's kind of like an event that for us that's telling us oh 
now we have we we have the end we we know what's the end of this particular actor rectangle so so that's that's basically using using um using a stack we can improve on the time complexity however i should mention that as far as um space complexity goes our space complexity the spaces actually go up because we are leaning on this additional uh, array or you know we have a list in, in in python right where if you if you have like for example uh if you have a uh, the heights array where each of these bars were just all in ascending order and they all supporting each other you could have a maximum of n bars at some at one point of time in your uh, in your array so the space complexity could be in the worst case it can be on time complexity is on perfect yep yeah, i uh think um, yeah that that makes perfectly sense and uh, can you start coding this uh, the solution sure i can let's see um, so would you like me to code it in leap code We set this one and let's do it this way. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, here what we have is uh, we have. Um, So what 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 we are given is the heights, which is a list of actual integers, okay, and so let's get get started with this. So the first thing we we talked about is um, we'd like to really keep track of the active bars. So these are actually these are actually the uh, the the bars corresponding to rectangles whose um, Whose whose ends have the have not yet been determined. We still don't know how far to the right these 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 uh, rectangles actually extend. So we and we'll say we're going to be using a stack. Okay, so we just keep it like this. Then we also want to iterate over uh, this particular heights array. We uh, need to keep track of the of the index and the height. So here, what I'm going to do is. Um, so we're going to go so let's see i have an index and i have the height okay and we are this is we, in python we can just enumerate over heights okay so here i am enumerating and then let's see what we we, we need to do here uh the um so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to look at our active bars. And also, we need to keep track of the largest area. Okay, so here, what we, let's see, what, what is the largest area? I'm just gonna keep the largest area. Just initialize that to zero. Okay, so here, um, So while we have some active bars and you know the let's I'm 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 gonna use this as an example. Let's look at the the, the bar at index one. If if this height um, let's see. So in heights. So let's say I have these active bars. And I'm looking at the at the bar that is at the very top of my stack. So let's say I had I had this this bar, which is index zero, which is at the top of my stack. Okay. So if this bar at the top of my stack is greater than or is equal to the the height of the bar I'm currently processing, then this means that 
you know, the, we can actually now do something here. We have, it's, it's time to calculate the area of the rectangle that is supported by uh, the, the bar at the top of the stack. This is a pretty long comment, but I'm just gonna let me get this up here. Okay, so so this is the, a good reference here to just look at. So let's see what we would do here first. So let me let me get the get the height. Uh, so here would be the the height here of this particular bar. So in order to get the height, remember that we are just storing the bar indexes in this active bars. So the height would actually be equal to. I'm gonna go to my heights array, and then. For my active bars, right, I'm actually going to pop this this one which is at the top because it is no longer active. You know, it's, it's, it's been blocked. So I'm actually going to go and pop it. Okay. The next uh, the next thing is I got to determine the width. What is the width of this rectangle going to be? Okay. Now when I when I pop this um, this particular bar. Let's say there was just one bar on my uh, on my in my active bars list. Then my active bars is, is actually going to be empty, and you know we cover this case that if so, if I have uh, if my active bars list it's not empty, then here's what I can can do for the width. I can now uh, take the Take the value of the index, right? That is currently sitting at the top of my of my stack, right? Okay, so basically it's going to be a difference. Okay, because index this this is the, the current one where I am. It's going to be greater than, and then I can go and see what's on the top of my stack. And then we have this adjustment of one. And if we have nothing more, there are no more active bars. Like, you know, we had that. Uh, wait, did I have my drawing? When, 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 when there are no more active bars, let's say, then we just use the, the, uh, the current index as the, as the width. So here, the width. If there's no, if, if, if we do not have any more active bars, then the width is just going to be equal to this particular index. So that's these are the main things to actually that would help us here. And then for the to calculate the largest area, now this is just a matter of getting the max of whatever largest area we had in place, and then this width times height. Okay, and at the end of this. Whatever this my my current index, it gets added to my active bars list, and so that's what we have. Then at the very end, I would return the largest municipal area. So let me just do a quick uh, check on this. And we can uh, then I also run like to run uh, like a test case on on the, on this one. So here we have uh, we are enumerating over heights. And while I have some active bars, and the one at the at the top of my of my stack is greater than than height of the current bar that I'm processing, then it's time to pop that 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 particular uh, bar. So I I pop it. I kind of get the height, and then if I say that there are no more bars, active bars remaining, then um, then the width is going to be equal to index. But if there are active bars remaining, I can I know that um, the width the width can be calculated as whatever is my current and in the index of the current bar minus what's sitting at the top of the stack minus one, and that will give me the largest area. So, um, Daniela, I think there is the one thing that perhaps is not correct, and the while you have active bars because while you have something in the stack and active bars of the previous element of the pre or the previous index, but you have to uh, 
Yeah, you have to add hate. Yes, yes. Because this is just an index. Exactly. Right? And yeah. so you so want to get or grab the value of the hate. Yes, yes. So that index, okay. So that's, so you, then this, this actually gives us, I think I have a typo here as well, active bars, so dot append. Okay. So here I'm actually appending an, an index here. And so if you were to just uh, do a, just a dry run to, to to this one, initially we have active bars to be empty. So I would just append this one, so index zero to this. Then when I come across uh, index one, well, this bar is a greater height than 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 these uh, than the bar at index one. I would actually pop this. I would calculate the width, and for the so when when I when I actually pop it, there's there's none there's nothing more the active bars, right? And so here the 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 width would would just be one, and so this the area of this rectangle would be would be the height uh, two times times one, and so and so forth. It goes on like that. Um, yeah. So you always will be keeping the the maximum the maximum value or the largest value. The, 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 the largest value. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So the just the um, the, the the stack makes this possible because it enables us to very effectively keep track of just these these rectangles who have not been blocked. Yes. And since um, the stack, uh, uh, the um, just the the push and the and the pop operations are all O one. So uh, the um, as far right. as the complexity so you, goes, mm -hmm. mainly in uh, in, in this iteration. Yes, yeah, so you only have one iteration over the. The height array, which is the time complexity of B of, of N only, you, you don't need to go more than one iteration in that case. Awesome, very very good. And and yeah, the um, the stacks keeps track of the elements that you are traversing, and at the same um, without losing the the order, right? Because you you push them in the order that you are encountered them mm -hmm. or at, and in the array, and then you can go back in the same order mm -hmm. without losing the um, the performance because you, you don't have to do any loops or any shifts or nothing, just going mm -hmm. back is just one uh, mm -hmm. version of one mm -hmm. time, linear time. I mean. mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Thank you, Daniela. So this is this, this was a very good uh, example. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, I guess we can have some time for the, uh, any questions that uh, the attendees could have, and and yeah, if we we before we move on to the next problem. Yes. Okay. All right. So, um, Harini. Yeah. At, at this point, typically we we pause the recording, and so that the uh, the participants can ask questions. And so we, we spend about five minutes. Oh, that sounds good. I I will pause the recording. Okay. So. Um... Okay. So uh, so Gabriela, I will. Um, I can I can initiate this this part of the yep. the interview and Harini if you you can start recording. Yeah, I just started. Yes. Awesome. Okay, Gabriella, welcome 
to this part of the interview, the mock interview. The problem that I have for you is uh, it's, it's a word ladder. I'm going to describe the problem. So we a transmission sequence from word begin word to word end word using a dictionary word list is a sequence of words from begin word to S1 to S2, finally to SK, such that every adjacent pair of words differs by a single letter. And um, every, every word basically in this, uh, where I is from one to K is in the word list. Note that begin word does not need to be in word list and SK is equal to end word. So basically what you're saying is that um, you have you have a, a begin word and there's an end word and basically what you're given is a, is a dictionary and uh, all the words in this particular dictionary, including the begin word, end word, they are of the same length and we are given some constraints as to the length of these words. They are at least one character in length and up to a max of 10 characters. And all the words are of the same length, as I said. Now, the number of words in this dictionary ranges from one to up to 5,000 words. And um, they all consist of lowercase English letters. And the begin word is definitely not equal to the end word. All the words in the word list are unique. And also note that every adjacent pair of words differs by just a single letter. And so here are the examples that are given. So let's say you have a word list, like this is the dictionary, you know, of, of this is the list of words we have. So you, you have hot, dot, dog, lot, log, cog, and the begin word is hit, okay? And you want to find out the transformation from hit to cog, but the transformation has to be in a certain sequence such that each subsequent word in the sequence differs from the previous word by just one letter. So for example, you have it should be hit, then hot, so I got replaced with O, then hot to dot, where H got replaced by D. And so this is, this is which, so the, this particular sequence is about five words long. So what the return, what, the, what, what we are expecting to return is return the number of words in the shortest transformation sequence from begin word to end word, or zero if no such sequence exists. Okay, and then they have another example here. So you have hit is the begin word, end word is cog. It so happens that um, this cog end word is not actually present in a dictionary at all. So there's no way, or it's, it's going to actually, uh, they, it's it's going to be hard to find a production sequence here for this, a transformation sequence. And so you just don't see. Do you have any, any questions? No, I, I don't have any question. I think, yeah, I think I got the problem um, understand, understood. And so I I would like to uh, then now take over the, um, the document and perhaps doing some explanation about how we can find the combination of words and, and find the best path, the, the, the best sequence of words. Um, okay. So Daniela, could you, I will be now sharing the screen. Okay. Okay, uh, can, can you see my uh, Google doc? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, um, so this is um, yeah, a problem with um, that we we want to find like there is a like a sort of relationship between the words that we have because we have one starting or one yeah one starting point which is a start word and then we want to reach wow. to um to the end of a of a transformation steps that we we will be doing to this uh, to the input that we have like. So, like we have in this example, like perhaps, like for starting, I have hit, and then uh, after some sequence, uh, I have um, get the end word. And um, so, for for this kind of 
problem like when we have like sort of of relationships between between the input that we have there there is there is a relationship or a correlation between the values but there is no a hierarchy there there is that that's not um, there is not a defined hierarchy since all that we want is finding a way to go from one word and after applying some steps finding finding the words that we want that we that we can um, form or build build up to to get the find the end word so that um I think in that case, when we have that kind of uh, of logic or that kind of um, that kind of description in the problem, that uh, that we can perhaps we can start making a, a drawing where we can see how we how we can like see this this uh, problem into more detail. So. We have this, I'm gonna put this um, here. What is the input that we have, for example, in this, in the first case that we, that we are given in the, in the, the problem description. So we have the begin word uh, heat and the end word cog. The, the begin word is not in the, in the word list. It's just an, a starting, um, an arbitrary uh, word, which uh, I also, um, notice that we have a relationship between two words if and only if they, the both words are different in just one character. So that's, I think that's something that is very important to keep in mind. And so let's say that we, we have uh, here um, just, uh, just a starting uh, presentation of these, uh, of these words, it's we have hit, and then how we can go from hit to to one word that it's just one character difference. So in the in the problem with in the word list, we have hot that, that that could be a candidate to to do this sequence valid. So we can go from hit to hot, and also we. If we had hot as a first or the, the starting point, we can also could be valid to to go from hot to heat. So I can go from heat to hot or vice versa. So so both both ways are valid. And so let's put another one. And how can we go from hot to another word that can get us? Uh, close to the one that we want, so we can we can see that we have hot, and then we can uh, have um, dot, which it's just one one letter different, so it's all uh, again valid. And then we can, if we continue searching, we have then we can have this gate uh, doc. And then let's put this here, doc, which is just one letter different. So it's a valid, it's a valid sequence. And we are going to uh, like make a, a, a like a, this a, like a connection between these, oops, let's see, let me see where, where the line is. And, I think I can remove this one. And so the dot can can go to dog. And then after going to dog, we can go to the one that we are looking for, which is which is go, which because we're only changing one letter. Right. So this this sort of uh, like path or the structure. Um, we can easily see that we are kind of building up a, a graph of words where every every sequence or every every word is like I said is is like there is a path connection or there is like a step that we can 
used for going to one to the other and, and vice versa. So there is not a direction um, a specific uh, to one for going to one to the other, but we can we can go backwards too. And so that that it's exactly a graph, which is an undirected graph because we have no direction. So for that kind of of um, of a structures where we want to find what is the closest or the shortest path that I can follow for going to one of the one of these um, viruses is it's the BFS BFS algorithm like, which I'm going to I'm going to put here the name of this algorithm which which we can be using for traversing I'm going to put this here so we can see the the words um, breadth first search allows us to to find or to traverse uh, a set of um, of vertices in which is in this case the words and allows us to to traverse in in a um, in a layer way because we're we're like we're going like by by a sequence we're not we're not going exactly directly from one to um, with uh, we don't have a, um, a direction defined so it's on the on on directed so this um, this algorithm can can help us to to find what is the shortest since we will be exploring um, all the vertices from one from one uh, one vertice to the other one and finding out which is a valid with as long as we have just one character different that it's a valid a valid path and uh, for 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 having this um, this algorithm uh, the time complexity that that we can we can find it's first we will need to to do because this is not a linear linear structure so we don't we can put these um, these vertices in a in an array as we have in the input because that that doesn't uh, that doesn't represent the way that the words are are connected so we need to find another another structure and and that can be uh, graphs can be represented uh, in in list we're using list and we we know also like this list are name have a particular name or a specific name which is the adjacent adjacency list which has every every vertices and every edges that have every every node or, or vertices but what if we don't have the adjacency list like in this case we will need to build it up uh, based on the input so in that case what um, there are others uh, other structure that we can uh, we can build up that that is also called the matrix adjacency matrix and this allows us to to build up all these uh, paths or combine or connections that the um, every vertices have has and what we are going to uh, what we do with this both is the time complexity will be based on the name and the number of words because that's that's what we have we have a, a list of words so based on these words we're going to build this matrix so we know that the number of words let's say it's n and since we have to find all the connections the time complexity will be n square it's like a because it's like a metric. So I'm going to use n uh, multiplied by n because I'm going to find all the connections between all the all the vertices. So 
this is uh, in this case since we don't have the agency adjacency list that's that's the first um that's the first thing that we can we can use and implement in order to find which is the best uh, the closest path or the shortest path that we can find between between the transformations of the strings transformations so this is um, the first solution that i would like, would like to implement and i don't know if you have any questions uh, daniela or if, if it's fine that i i can start with the code yes yes go ahead okay um so i'm going to I'm going to use a lead code in this case and so we we start with a with the code and then we can test it out if this is working and for the implementation i'm going to use a c sharp for the for the language so one thing that i so that i uh, mentioned is i'm going to use breadth for search which is one of the algorithms that we can use to traverse graph and also this uh, there is another one and uh, but for traversing graphs, but this breadth research is the best for this kind of problem. And so breadth research is um, it's based on a, on one structure, which is the Q. The Q, it's, um, it's a structure that has a particularity that all the elements are inserted at the, at the at the front part of the or the structure, and are um, popped or removed at the other side of the of the structure. So if we insert it by the um, by the left, we are going to remove them by the right. So it's like the first input. It's the last. Um, the first input is the first output. Okay, so it's like it's uh, very similar to to a queue of um, when we are going to go to the supermarket and we want to to buy some some things and we are going to check at, at the at the end of the shopping and we the first person that gets into the into the queue is the first one that is going to be out of that queue. So this is the particularity that we we are going to be using and and that allows us also to keep the order of the elements because we we are we are traversing the the graph so we need to keep that order that order in the um, yeah in the in the way that every time that we moved from one node or from our vertice to the other we are uh, we are keeping track of that and we know how many steps we need to perform to get the shortest path. And so I'm going to want to be also adding uh, the input is it's uh, a list of words, and then we have two two strings. But I would like to have I would like to use um, a hash set hash set because this uh, will give us a little bit uh, a little bit of performance. If we use uh, any um, any access, if we do any access to the word list, these operations will be in linear time, and we we will have to traverse the word list in in this case. So we are going to be keeping a list of all the words that we are visiting during the during this traversing during the, the traversing of the graph. So we are going to be um, also checking or uh, marking us uh, or removing removing as we as we go over all the list the ones that we have already um, checked or try to to have this transformation that we were going to find the next the next word that we can use in the sequence um, so i'm going to be uh, using this uh, hash it and so i i will 
Gabriela, I had a quick question for you. Um, yeah, how, um, let's go ahead. How are you going to go about building the graph? So given, uh, given the set of words that you have, uh, how will you go about building your graph? Uh, can you just talk to that? Yeah. Um, just, just the brief, uh, yeah. give us a brief idea of how you would do that. Yeah, of course. We have uh, no, the number of words, like we have the list, the list of words. So that that is going to give us. We are going to loop over, uh, over this um, this loop using the the queue because we want to be like finding what is the shortest way that we can traverse all the list because the, our list is uh, the um, all the words that we want to try to find this um, this. The sequence. So remember that we we have we don't have uh, an adjacency list that can tell us how the, all the words are connected. So we need to find out which one we 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 don't know what which one is the next, right? Because we are starting, for example, we are starting in uh, we have hit, but after hit there there are many combinations that we can. That we can have for um, for using for having this uh, this the next step, right? But we know that if the if the word it's different only in one character, then it's a valid combination, right? So um, so we're going to be using the queue, right? So every time that we take one word from the word list, we're going to be putting that in the queue, and that. That um, that word that we have in the queue, it's going to be the the seed for building up all the all the uh, vertices that have these uh, these words, right? Because we need we need like a seed, like a seed to start the list of words that we can build or we can transform to get to the next word that we have in the list. So we're going to try to match. The one that we have with the combinations that we can we can do changing just one character at a time, and looking which one it's in our list and having that as the as the next step, that's a valid step. Okay, so that, that was what I was looking for. So, for example, if your starting word was hit, right? You, what you're saying is you would try different combinations of. Yeah. Uh, you know, varying, uh, re replacing H with uh, any of the yeah. letters, the lowercase letters from A to Z, right? Right. And, then, and seeing uh, if 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 that if the word formed by replacing H with any of those letters from A to Z, if that if that word exists in your in the dictionary, right? Exactly. And right. Uh, so for example, yeah. it, uh, maybe the next word would be sit. Uh, maybe right. maybe maybe come across S I. SIT in the dictionary, then right. uh, so 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 that would des decide how you start adding uh, adding uh, these words to the queue. So they are added in a certain order. Uh, so that right. so they adding added in, in a certain order. And then yeah. you, you actually process those elements in the queue uh, that way. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Because we want to we want to find which one are the closest, the okay. closest to the one that we have, to the current one, okay. right? Because otherwise we could be trying out the ones that we already have, but we are not certain that those are close to the one that uh, that we are like, like the previous one or the current one that exactly. when we are starting. So we want to know which one is the closest so we can use that one and based on that one, then finding with finding another one that can be also close to to the one that I have. So we are going to be trying um, like finding the intermediate steps because we have the steps we have we know that we want to use the the the, the words in the sequence but we don't know which are the intermediate intermediate steps, right? We don't know how to how to move from one word to the other one. Right, mm -hmm. so we are trying to find which which one, which is um, based on the and the on the current one, will allows me to 
uh, to change this one character and, and move to the to the one that it's actually in my dictionary. Okay, so so that's what we are going to be um, building up, and and this hash set is going to, uh, to help us to to avoid uh, being repeating repeating any any words that because perhaps we can we can see that there are some words that can be repeated in the transformations. So we are not going to be um, looking for the same words. So we are going to be using for that this hash list and because word list, sorry, I'm blocking I'm word list, which is the starting the starting part of the of the hash set. So that's my my word list. And then um, and then sorry Daniela, sorry. Do yeah. you want to yeah, say Michelle, I think I think uh, your explanation is good just because of the in uh, in we are running a little uh, short on time. So I'm going to let you go ahead and complete your coding, the coding. And that okay. way we, we can now uh, we can also have some time for questions from the audience. So I'll let you go ahead and complete the coding. Okay, okay. so we will have some questions at the end. Okay, so I will add the the, the queue that we will be using for knowing which are which is the current the current word that we are um, we are looking for these uh, transformations. So I'm going to I'm going to define that based on on the type that we have, which is a string, and then we want to know also how many steps we want we we are doing. So we are we also need to have a counter. And um, so one of the constraints is that if we don't find in our words list the end word, right? We are not going to have a way to to find a, a, sequ a valid sequence. So we just want to make sure that we don't have that before going over the all the traversing. So we are going to just return zero as the problem uh, it's saying. And, and I think this is words, just word list. And actually, I think I should use a different name because otherwise we are going to have a problem with the name of the variable. OK, so a word list, uh, me hash uh, it or map also so can be can be used that name. It doesn't contain my end word. That means that we are not going to do anything and, and that we can go and return zero. Then the first thing that we want to, it's put in the queue, the begin word, because that's my starting point. Right. So I'm going to have begin word in my, in my queue. And since I have this means that I have just one step in my in my sequence. So I'm going to also make sure to reflect that in my counter. And I'm going to increment. And then what we are going to do based on the breadth for search is I'm going to be traversing me, my, my word list based on my queue. So while the queue has elements, I'm going to be, be exploring or having elements in the in the queue and and making transformations for those intermediate steps that we want to to find so i'm going to make sure that i have um something in my queue and then while i have that i'm going to be continuing exploring and and also um since we are counting uh, we also want to keep track of the elements that we have like how many is steps or what what is this step where i am for not uh, for, because we don't want to mix like we said perhaps we are going to find some trans, for some transformations uh, in in more than one level and we are going to be tracking uh, different different uh, levels or with different uh, steps so we want to also use the queue to to keep track or um to keep track of how many how many iterations or how many words we are uh, we're going. So in this case, 
I'm going to keep that in my in a in a variable in an additional variable, which is the the size or the number of words that we have in the queue in that iteration. And based on that, I'm going to start looking for the for the transformations that we we will be uh, building up. And so I'm going to have this uh, check that it's always going to be uh, the size of my queue, and then I'm going to increment my my it uh, my index, and so I'm going to um, define uh, the word that I am popping or the queuing for the queue. Because I'm going to take the one that I have in in front of that queue to start uh, looking for for the end word. So in this case, my word, it's um, I take one word from the queue, and immediately what we want is check that this word perhaps could be the one that I'm looking for that it's uh, end word. And we are going to return in that case. Okay. And then I'm going to now I'm going to go over the length of each word. And um, based on that length, I'm going to be I want to be like um, creating or making the new words based on the on changing one character at, the, at a time for these uh, words. Okay, and what we are going to do is like we have, let's say we have hit and we want to find which which combination or which um, transformation of this word it's uh, it's in my list. So what I want to do is first uh, the first thing is I'm going to be um, substituting uh, making a sub, um, I'm going to exchange the first uh, character with with all the, the possibilities that I can have, which are all the, the letters in my, my alphabet from A to C. So the, um, and then, so if I, if I change it, I'm going, to, I'm going to do an A and then I'm going to keep the, the rest of the word, right? Because we have already um, changed one and then the rest of the word is going to be the same. So we can, we can divide the, the word into two parts because we are going to be keeping a part of the word. That, that part is going to be changed and then we, we're going to uh, put the rest of that word. So we have, we're going to have, we're going to be taking what we have before the character that we are going to um, exchange. So if I am in the zero position, that means that it's at the very uh, start, and I don't I don't have any um, any character to take, so I'm going to um, just returning uh, an empty string. So I'm not I'm not going to change anything, and otherwise I'm going to just take um, the words that are the the characters that are after after that that index. Right, because I don't have anything before, and then uh, the other part is the part that I have after my chain, the character that I am changing, or that I am, uh, yeah, looking to exchange. So I'm going to um, increment my index, and if this is exactly the word length, then that means that we. We are at the end of the word, and then we don't have to replace anything. So we replace, we return um, an empty string. I'm sorry, here it's just empty. Here it's, um, yeah, 
support. And I'm going to take the rest of the part, which is the substring that it's after my index. And, and this will, will be done, like I said, using all the combinations of the characters. So for that, we can use just a loop, which is uh, changing all the, the code of the characters that we have. We have 26 characters that uh, access the problem, which is the uh, lower characters. And we are going to do this, uh, like this is my, tra my transformation word. So I'm going to do like the before character, before the, the character that I am going to um, change and that then I'm going to put the new character, right? I'm going to do this and uh, that's it's an operation for uh, forecasting and a character uh, based on the on its number or in its ASCII code. And then I'm going to con concat the characters that af are after. Right? So we have three parts. And what I want to do or what I want to make sure is that if this word, if this words list um, have this transformation or transform word, I'm not going to be um, traversing anymore. Like I, I'm not going to, I'm going to take it off of the list because I don't want to do again that the same word because I have already gone going through these, um, these combinations. So I'm going to remove that if that's in my uh, hash at so if that can be removed, that means that we have that in the in the word list and transformation. And, um, and that means that this is a valid step. So we can enqueue that part that in my, in my queue because that's a valid valid step. Right? And and let's see. Um, now that we have that uh, in the queue, that means that we have find or we have encountered one uh, step. So we want to also increment or, or counter every time that we that we finish with one um, with one word or one combination of words, we want to increment because that's that means that we advance or we move on one uh, one step, right? And um, that means that after this this while it's done, then we don't we won't be doing anything else. That's that's all we we want to do. So we finish. We check that the the brackets are fine and of course if we if we never hit this if the if of the line 31 if we did never find this word that it equals to the n word right because i didn't get that in my in my combinations of words then that means that we didn't find any any possible path in that, uh, in that combination of words or in that list. So we will be returning zero in that case, because that's, that's what the problem is, is requiring us, like returning zero for that. And let me check, just, a, just do a quick check if that, if yeah. there is any, any Gabriela, just a quick note of the incrementing of the count value, count plus plus. Um, right. Right, right now, it's happening outside of the while loop. So perhaps uh, outside. The... Right. Well, it should be um, inside of the while. Mm -hmm. So it's it's uh, before the while ends. Yeah, because here we have this uh, this loop. 
Oh, perfect. Right. Okay. Yeah, we have this this loop, which is the four that we will be traversing based on the steps that we are going to be taking one word and and that from that work we're going to be doing all of the transformations and all the like the exploration of the of the neighbors or okay. or all of the valley yeah. transformation that we we have uh, for for that particular word so every time that we finish this there's a queue mm -hmm. of the of, of that word that we that we are um, using that means that we can in, we can increment our count or sure. counter. I think I got just thrown off because the brackets they seem to uh, I guess remind yeah me the brackets the since system. there is yeah the the, low, oh. the loop is kind of I that's think. fine that yeah. that's fine no 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 worries uh, just in the interest of time uh, you want to just tell us the quick the time complexity and then right. we can so yeah, we can we can talk about the time complexity of this uh, problem. Yeah, in this case, we have talked. Well, let's let's see. Uh, we are doing um, a loop of 26, 26 characters, right? And that loop will be um, uh, will be uh, by the number of words that we have in the in the word list and every word a list is going to be traversed the length of this word right so we have to we have two things we have the number of words and we have the length because the length it's also having it if the length of the word it's longer then we will be doing of course it will it will increment the time of, of the of these um, of this algorithm so so if if n was the length of each word, if right. n, n were the length of each word, then we are iterating over each character in the word. So that's what you're saying. That's where you get the twenty six times n. So the, you, you right. that the innermost loops. Yeah, okay. the innermost, mm -hmm. the innermost will be like twenty six, and right. based on the on the number of words that we have. We mm -hmm. have to find all the combinations based on on that word. So let's say the, that uh, every word or the yeah every word that we have it's M. So this M is going to be also uh, having so the combinations that we have for this word it's also be in, taken into account here. So based on the BFS, we know that we have to find all the combinations based on this matrix, right? So it's basically um, like finding all the combinations and it, this is going to be M square. Mm -hmm. Because I'm doing this, I'm doing the BFS based on, a ma and, on the matrix that we, we need to build up because we don't have we need to find all the combinations and based on, on the all the combinations that we are finding, having which of these are the next step. So mm -hmm. we basically need to explore uh, in the worst case, of course, we are always talking about the worst case, we will have to explore all the all the all the vertices, right? Mm -hmm. So so it will be uh, so based on that. And the time complexity will be m, uh, m square. And also we talked that uh, the the length of the word multiplied by the length. And we have the 26. But since the 26, as we recall that when we are um, when we are calculating the time complexity, we always take off the constants. So 26 is a constant. So that that won't change. Uh, no matter which length we have, so so keeping this as the uh, time complexity, I think that would represent what what is our time complexity for this for this algorithm, mm -hmm. right? We are going to like simplify in these the the expression of the time complexity, mm -hmm. and also the space complexity. 
like how many words we we will be keeping in the in the queue how many in words the in the queue in the worst case it's also m m squared because that's the number of combinations that we are going to be creating in the worst case and and uh, and and the length of the word also will uh, increase that the space so it's m squared multiplied by the n by n which is the length of the string remember that the length of the strings is is the same for all of them that's a constant or a constraint in the in the problem that the n word it's equal to the beginning word so it's always going to be the the same length so that's just uh, also uh, include in the in the space complexity uh, for space complexity when we are adding these words to the queue we only add the words that are valid words that are already present in our words in our word list so if the maximum number of words in our word list were m then the maximum length of our queue would also be m right but we are we are creating all these um, all the combinations by each word so yeah yeah i think yeah we are not keeping them in the queue yeah because we are checking that if that you're right you when we have uh, a word that actually exists in the word list that's when we put that in the queue so that's that's true but but anyway, we're creating that a number of strings, and, and let's keep in mind that every time that we create a string, we're creating one, mm -hmm. one new object because we don't have we can change strings. We are always creating one, mm -hmm. and so that that will that will use a space and uh, and this for this case. So I, for so yeah, I think. Those will won't be keep won't be kept in the queue, mm -hmm. but but we will be using that in the memory as we as we are creating them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that yeah. sounds good. Well, thank you, Gabriela. Thank you for explaining this problem. And uh, Harini, I'd like to turn over control to you. Okay, uh, I'll actually stop recording right now. <laughs>